Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics and Hobby King. Today we're gonna to discuss balancing your aircraft. Um, this is something that so many people do wrong. It's also something that a lot of people are a little confused about. Um, there are some big mistakes people make when balancing it, and that's my primary motivation for making this video is to, to avoid bad mistakes with balancing your aircraft. First of all, most manufacturers give you a, a center of gravity range. Uh, normally it's, you know, pretty close to the spar and so on. Uh, some planes are not very CG uh, uh, critical, you know, uh, 3D planes and so on and so forth tend to have a little broader range. Uh, planes such as this sometimes, you know, I've seen them completely unflyable with a bad center of gravity. Um, and I've been on the sticks when it happens. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. But for the most part, it's a very simple process. <clears throat> but the important elements of this is what I really want to go over with you today. All right. Um, first of all, I need to address this. The PA airplanes, when they come from the factory and you can go to the manual, 99.999% of the time, the CG will be perfect if you balance it right where the manual tells you to. Um, they do so much testing, it's, it's a little crazy and um, a little neurotic, I think, sometimes, but it's perfect. So uh, generally, once you get the balance point and, and you uh, uh, balance the plane on it, it should be just perfect to fly. However, um, when the planes come from the factory, um, this balance range is a very good start, but I'm telling you, it's not where you should balance the aircraft. Um, you should balance the aircraft when it, your individual airplane with your ESC positions and your uh, uh, servo positions and the, the weight of your batteries and everything like that is all put into consider, or taken into consideration. Your ultimate goal is to be able to fly inverted at a 45 at about half to two thirds throttle which I'm gonna demonstrate in, in, a, in a second or two. Um, and then what you wanna do is you wanna have the nose slightly kinda of coming down. So when you roll to level, you're not gonna have any dramatic ballooning when you roll inverted. We don't want any dramatic ballooning or dramatic turns towards the ground, which means you won't be able to do point rolls nicely or anything like that. It also affects coupling. If the uh, CG is too far aft, the, the, the plane will start to couple on knife edge as well. So I, I like something so close to neutral that I don't have to work hard once it goes inverted. I don't want to have to push too much up elevator. Uh, I mean, uh, down elevator when I go inverted. Um, I've heard people say, you know, you just want to blow on it to, to keep it level. And that to me is an ideal CG position. So no matter what plane you're flying, when it goes inverted, it should uh, it it should not exactly maintain its trajectory. It should start coming down just a little bit. Okay, uh, you know sometimes depending on your uh, your trim situation, like if the plane is kind of nose heavy, you'll put a lot of down uh, or up elevator in it to to uh, to trim it to level. Um, if when you land you see a lot of a, a lot of up like this in it to keep it level. Well, you know it's nose heavy, and there might be a two-step process. You might need to really make sure that you can get the plane to fly with the elevator close to level before you start doing it, because it will give you some false readings. In other words, when the elevator is up, to counteract for some nose heavy, by the time you go upside down and it's nosing towards the ground, part of the problem is you already have some elevator dialed in. So, and it will look, a bit more exaggerated um, and give you basically a false sense of where the plane is actually at. I suggest that you take some time and make sure it's balanced properly. Um, now, when it comes to balancing the airplane, I have test flown more planes than I can count that when I get to the point where I am uh, about to made the aircraft, they tell me, oh, I just want you to know, I have about seven pounds of lead in the nose because I couldn't get it to balance. 
to me that says instantly <laughs> that they've done something tragically wrong, the CG is wrong, or they're not reading it properly. If you've got to add a whole lot of weight, I mean, there are several warbirds I've had and jets that do require some weight up front. Um, but generally, do everything in your power to not add any weight to that aircraft. It does nothing but, but diminishes the performance. Um, and truthfully, it's, it, most of the time, it's just not necessary. Um, you know, you move the ESC a little forward, you can move the battery a little forward, but don't mess with anything but components that you already have on the aircraft uh, to, to get the CG you're looking for. Another really big mistake that's made when you are, when people are, are getting a CG, okay, is they're getting it to balance. And so wherever it's balanced, they've, they've managed to balance it. Let's say it's very heavy up front, okay? Well, bottom line is if you put a lot of weight on the other side of it, it'll balance it. Here's the problem. What happens is a, a, a very typical example is somebody wants the plane to go very fast. They want the plane to go fast, so they put a huge motor in it, which requires a larger battery and a spinner. So right now they have a ton of weight at the front of the aircraft. So they think, well, I'm overpowering it so much I can afford a little weight. So now what they have to do is they have to compensate by putting weight on the tail. But now you've created a dynamic within the airplane that makes it inherently bad from a flying standpoint. Because technically if I have, uh, envision a, a rod maybe three feet long. If I have a lot of weight on the front and I have to put a lot of weight on the other side to counteract it, three pounds on each side, technically it'll balance. The problem is, if you remember a teeter-totter, you know, or a seesaw when you were a kid, um, you know, d depending on where you put things, a, a small kid and a large man could be on the same one, depending on where you, uh, 